below, I'm Tap G. And I'm Surfer Clock. And welcome to What's the Attraction, where, where our work is your vacation. vacation. One of mankind's greatest gifts is the imagination. With it, we can explore worlds, dimensions, and universes of ideas and apply them to real life. Authors like Lewis Carroll, C.S. Lewis, and J.M. Barry use their fertile minds to conjure up extraordinary worlds like Wonderland, Narnia, and Neverland, much to our delight. Walt Disney's staff was no exception, bringing to life fairy tales and stories and characters to further feed the unrestrained imaginations of children and adults alike. And nowhere is the example of the value of imagination more evident than in the classic Epcot attraction, Journey into Imagination with Figment. This ride is one of those gems that has transformed several times over the years, yet still remains a park staple thanks to the ride's mascot, Figment. But there's so much more to it than that. Let's dive right in, shall we? Epcot opened in October of 1982. It was heavy on science and education and light on Disney's signature entertainment. So in 1983, all that would change. Journey into Imagination opened and delighted almost everyone. The ride starred a whimsical Santa Claus-like figure known as the Dreamfinder, who brought the world of fantasy to life in his dirigible, the Dreammobile. He used a time-honored formula to create the namesake Figment of Imagination. How'd it go again? Well, that's just great. Uh -huh. Not quite. Huh? I'll throw in a dash of childish delight. Dreamfinder represented the wisdom and knowledge of the imagination, while Figment represented the wild, impulsive side. The two complemented each other perfectly. Dreamfinder on the ride was voiced by voiceover veteran Chuck McCann, while Figment was voiced by Billy Barty. But from 1983 to 1987, Dreamfinder stood outside the Imagination Institute with his purple friend in tow, greeting passers-by, played by Ron Schneider, who also voiced some of Dreamfinder's lines in the ride. Wait, y you mean that guy from the Adam Sandler movies? Ow! Ron Schneider, not Rob Schneider. <clears throat> this version of the attraction lasted until 1998, and Mr. Schneider has gone on to show writing for Universal amongst many other projects. Recently, he just published his memoir, From Dreamer to Dreamfinder, and it's one of the best books we've read in a while. With so much insight into the theme park industry, Tap G and I couldn't help but be both charmed and fascinated. So check it out when you can, listeners. You might be pleasantly surprised. Ah, but Dreamfinder and Figment couldn't last forever. In 1999, Disney revamped the ride to focus more on the science of imagination, starring Monty Python alumni Eric Idle as Dr. Nigel Channing, renamed Journey into Your Imagination. Hold on, Figment. I'm getting to that. Um, anyway, this version shut down in 2001. People's love for Dreamfinder and especially Figment was far more overwhelming than Disney's executives anticipated. In summer of 2002, Disney tried again with Journey into Imagination with Figment. Wow, wow, wow. Dreamfinder hadn't returned except as an inside joke on a door written as Dean Finder, but the song sure did. The classic ride's theme song, One Little Spark, was written by Disney's own Sherman Brothers, who also wrote the music for It's a Small World, Mary Poppins, and Winnie the Pooh. Eric Idle returned as Dr. Channing, but Billy Barty was replaced by David Gels to voice Figment. Gels is best known as the voice of the Muppets' Great Gonzo. You first enter the Imagination Institute, complete with all sorts of great visual treats, including tributes to movies like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and Flubber. Once in your vehicle, Dr. Nigel Channing welcomes you to the Institute's open house, but Figment interrupts, trying to coax the writers into letting their imaginations free. The doctor vehemently disagrees, preferring to retain the imagination and to study and control it. In the sound lab, the sight lab, and the smell lab, the doctor strives to experiment with your imagination's impact on the five senses, but the periwinkle prankster continually foils the experiments, singing and playing like a little child. And after the ride is Image Works, a play area for kids and a few adventurous adults to create music, paint digital photos, and get their faces engraved in glass. So I, now I guess we must ask ourselves this question. Is the current incarnation the best version out of the three? Server Clock? Well, considering that a journey into your imagination only lasted about two years, 
Um, I'm really glad that we actually have the incarnation that we have now. Mm -hmm. Um, One Little Spark with its new verses is definitely a fresh take on imagination, and it kind of deals well with the ride's theme. And, of course, having Figment back is the best decision they could have made. Now, Figment does work well as a foil, but I think he's much, much better served as a friend. I agree with you wholeheartedly. The... Um, The charm from Journey into Imagination comes solely from Figment and the two... uh, Sorry, from Figment and the song. Uh, Without either one of those two, I think the the whole thing would fall apart at the seams. Which, oddly enough, it did with the second incarnation. Mm -hmm. Um, So those two are easily the best parts of the ride. Honestly, I wish I could have gone back and seen the original version with Dreamfinder. But of course, um, I really can't say for YouTube. So, as a whole, the ride is very charming and whimsical, but like I said, mostly for those two parts. Yeah, um, Dr. Nigel Channing, he is, he's a naive character, but the alum, the uh, Monty Python guy, Eric Idle, he, I don't think he could really decide what sort of character he wanted to play with. Not um, really. So, he tried playing both. He was the straightforward kind of to start it, and by the end, he's, oh, imagination runs wild, hee hee hee. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of confusing. But it plays on one of the oldest formulas that's out there. Take your typical buddy picture. Say something like Robin Hood. Or, or Brother Bear. Yeah, it's you kind of turn that into a theme park ride where Cynic meets Freewheeler, and Freewheeler changes Cynic by the end. That's essentially this ride. Now, I'm not saying it's a bad ride. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> um, but I think Disney can do a lot better, and they can challenge us. Now, the first incarnation is out there on YouTube and on the Figment's Imagination fan site. Um, martinsvids.net is the name of the user, and I think that's also the name of the website. He did an ultimate fan tribute to it, and it's definitely worth checking out so that you can see the original incarnation. Now, the original version of the ride was more of a focus on the magic of imagination, and it had a lot of fantasy to it. The second version was really a downer, because it started off with scanning your minds to say, oh no, there seems to be no imagination in your heads, let's change that. It's like, wow, that's kind of an insulting way to start a ride. Um, And the rest of it was very drab, very boring, even for Epcot. And of course, like I said, there's no figment or one little spark. The third version is actually a mix of the two. There's some science, but there's a lot of freewheeling magic that you'd expect from the first one. So it's pretty good for what it is. I do wish that there could be more innovative uses of the imagination rather than just having things like an upside down house, a butterfly that slowly disappears, and a train that you can't see. Um, But though it does work given the ride's minimal budget, but it doesn't have any rewrite ability, save for a few inside jokes. Though, I, granted, one of my favorites is the um, the Letterman jacket and the sneakers outside the computer lab as a tribute to the movie The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes. That's probably one of my favorite in-jokes that almost nobody I know actually gets. Nobody except us and probably Kurt Russell, who starred in the movie. Perhaps, perhaps. <laughs> so with that, I'm giving Fi- Journey to Imagination with Figment a 2.5 out of 5. Never mind, it is one of my favorites in Epcot. Yep, and I'm going ahead and giving it a 3 out of 5. Um, But I think this ride really does prove that imagination is something that belongs to all of us. (laughs) That's right, Figment. And thankfully, this ride restricts almost no one. ECVs, uh, those electric convenience vehicles, and wheelchairs are welcome in the standard queue. And the 714 rule is, of course, in place. You must be at least seven years old to go alone or go with somebody who's at least 14 and older. If you're younger, that is. Yeah. Handheld captioning is available as well as audio description. As far as recommendations go, this is absolutely an all-inclusive ride. Except for a few loud noises and a couple blasts of air, there's nothing here that will deter even the very young children. The ride as a whole is very bright, colorful, and whimsical. Adults can even get into the message of utilizing the imagination and even some of the jokes. <laughs> Why, everyone can use their imagination thanks to one little spark of inspiration. Hey, 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 ho- hold up, hold up. Why does huh? you get to chat with Figment? I just must be in touch with the creative part of my brain more than you are. Oi, I read the ruddy script and I didn't get my own purple dragon muse. We fired you weeks ago, Tapford. Just take your severance pay and go already. You never gave me a severance pay. Oh, okay. Well, then just go already. (sighs) Blackguard. Yeah, well, your accent's phony. I'm starting to think you're not even British. 
he he is he is British, right? Or, or wait, is he English? I, I I get the two mixed up. Wow. <clears throat> anyway, that's all we have for today. Our idea bag is full, and we're off to the dream port to look for next week's episode. So until then, I'm Surfer Clock, and I'm Tap G, and I'm Tapford Gifford. And as always, thanks for listening to What's the Attraction? Where our work is your vacation. To the dream port! Imagination A dream can be A dream come true With just that spark In me and you